Welcome to Hobby Link TV. My name is Sid and I'm going to be your host for this new segment we're putting on called Gunpla TV. Here we are at episode 50. It's incredible, Sid. 100, Sid. 100. This is episode 150. It's episode 200. We are on episode One eternity later. All right, and uh, hey, everybody. And that is why Tales of the Abyss is the best RPG of all time. Any questions? What that? About, no. Final Fantasy. I don't know that game. All right, guys, so what's the game plan today? <laughs> He's gonna sleep. Anna? Um, Bandai Star Wars Kits. No. No. What's that? No. No, absolutely. Yeah. No. Um, we got a lot of new snacks, so I'm gonna taste taste all of them. Sounds Excellent. good. Good idea. I'm still uh, developing ideas for the boss builds, uh, the new program that we're planning on doing, so I have several plastic models that I need to go building uh, to test for ideas for the show. Sounds good. And I think I'm going to go binge watch uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I'd like you to make a report on uh, all of the different restaurants in Sano and then we can decide where to eat from there. Oh, so it's <laughs> Okay. Uh, I think that that new high-resolution Gundam Astra should be coming in today, so I'm going to go out to the warehouse, see if I can find it, and crack it on for Gunpla TV. Oh, Astra, where's the Astra? Oh! I found it. Oh! Astra, high-resolution model.
Hi Todd. Miss me? And here we are, episode 300. But I'm not sure if I like in this weather. It's a bit too cold. It's it's cloudy. It's winter. What do you think? Do you think we can somehow go back in time to a time when it's not when it's not so wintry? I think we can. All right guys, episode 300 is here and we've decided to blow our budget for shopping. Today we're gonna go on a shopping trip. I'm going to buy some new shirts. It's gonna be really exciting. That's what you guys wanna see, I think, right? 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 Maybe not. Actually, what we're here to see is... The one one scale unicorn gun down. We are here at Diver City in beautiful Tokyo, it's a beautiful sunny day and we've got a beautiful Gundam. It doesn't get more perfect than this. And that's exactly what we need for episode 300. A perfect day and a perfect Gundam and you can't get any better than this. You can tell we are not inside of the studio today. We are at dun, 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 Diver Where City we? in Odaiba. It's crazy. And it is... We Big. are with the giant unicorn. So this replaced the original RX-78 statue which they had here for a couple of years. And now they've taken that down, they've replaced it with the unicorn. And we get to see it during the winter season here. We've got the winter winter 2018-2019 sign up front. Yeah, we, we're sorry, the there's going to be some weird cuts here. But uh, like uh, we come here on multiple days. Yes. And uh, probably winter is the best, right? Oh, I think so. Because they got the Christmas trees. Yeah, they got the Christmas trees. Unfortunately, also, they're not lit up right now during the daytime. If it's cloudy, right, it's better. It is better. To see the lights. It is better. But Todd, hey. what is your favorite kit of the year? All right, for 2018, I have to give my award of the best kit of the year to the real grade Sazabi. So Sazabi is... First of all, it's one of my favorite mobile suits, and I tend to prefer 144th, 1 144th scale over the but, giant, wait, wait, the wait, larger sorry. ones. The dumb people, well, actually for me, <laughs> it's, it's the red one, right? That is the red one, the giant red one with the, with the giant leg skirts, and he's really big and bulky. That's my favorite. Actually, when we go inside the shop, inside of Diverse City, we'll show it to you later, but they actually have like a giant... God, how many meters tall would this thing be? Like a four meter tall Sazabi statue inside one. of this shop. A proper one. Of course, it's not like this size, but it's it's a good size scale. Not as detailed as the RG. This actually. massive, too. massive, massive thing. In a few minutes, we'll be able to show this off. Like yeah. the transformation, but. Yeah, that should be starting soon, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, let's. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so now it's been transformed and we have it in full destroy mode. It's lit up in its red destroy mode colors. I don't know, does it light up in green? I don't remember. I don't think so, no. No? I mean, it's got the clear part, so it could probably light up as any color that they want. But yeah, it looks really cool when it's all open up. You got the, the full on face mask on there. Not in unicorn mode anymore. Really awesome. If you come to Tokyo, definitely you should check it out. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is located at Diver City in yeah. Odaiba. So we're at Odaiba. And this is actually like a, a man-made place, right? Yeah, this is a man-made island out in the middle of uh, yeah. Tokyo Bay, kind of. Honestly, so. it's a cool place to come. It's I a really it. cool place. Over, over there, like over there is like a cool man-made beach. It's oh. great to go, have a beer. You I don't know, think you can out. actually swim in that beach, though. No, you can't. I don't know if you'd want to swim in Tokyo Bay to, waters, to yeah, be honest. No, to no. But anyway, look, at all the brands and stuff. We probably yeah. shouldn't be showing them for legal purposes, but <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, and you can <laughs> check out all the people posing to take pictures with the... Uh, oh, we missed her. She was doing a she was doing a great pose right, over there um, that Obasan. This guy's posing like a champ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's like a Todd pose, just like standard just standing, just standing straight. Hey, let me do that pose for you guys. Okay. This is a Todd pose. <laughs> and now you can see some umbrellas are coming out. It is starting to rain. So I think it's time for us to go on into the Gundam base shop inside of Diver City. Let's go! Look at those legs. I'm a leg man myself. All right, one more thing to mention before going on inside of the Gundam base is I actually have a Gundam trailer. So all of you, all of you trailer fans out there, if you don't want to go all the way up to the seventh floor where they have the actual Gundam shop, they just have this little trailer shop. You can buy some. Of, they don't have everything that's in the Gundam base, but they have some of the limited type of items. We can't go in there, I'm afraid, because it is no photo. Yeah, no photo, no movie. But, but, but seriously, the other place is, is probably good, right? I think so. You know, I've taken plenty of pictures inside of that shop myself. So let's do all of our main photography in there. Yeah. But, but, before oh, that. before that, oh, we have, there's, yeah, this Diver City actually has like three Gundam related shops. Yeah. So on the seventh floor, you've got the giant Gundam base, you've got the Gundam trailer, and you have dun -dun -dun, a Gundam, 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 Gundam Cafe. Oh, I like really this. Cool food. We can get some Gundam Gunplay Yaki. So you can get it with chocolate cream. You can get your Gundam Damn, pancake we went here. We're with chocolate again. cream inside. I would definitely get one of these bad boys. A bit of Haro Fra. <laughs> a little Halo. Haro coffee. Hello, matcha, matcha coffee, and they, they have the, this is that uh, giant Gundam. I would love to have one of these things. Could imagine where the heck would I put it in the apartment? Dying. I have He's no idea. One, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> they had this and they had the Zaku. Actually, Kanye West, the no famed way. Kanye West actually has the Zaku inside of his apartment. Cool. Let's go Gundam shopping. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so one cool thing about inside of the Gundam base is right in the entrance they have this like wall of all of like the main mobiles main Gundam mobile suits from all the different series starting from of course the original the OG daddy the RX 78 now they have it you here built that one I have indeed built these ones they have the RX 78 from the ori origin series and they have I think that's the the, the master grade like the 2.0 they have that part next to it because it has more of a classical look to it and then just all of the different mobile suits let's see if we just go down the aisle I'm not going to name off every single one that they have on here because this is quite oh, a lot. lot. Right? This is a I lot. Mean, we got the, the V2. Like, look, at this. look at this. This is a massive display right here. But uh, is there any that stand out to you? Stand out in terms of what? <laughs> in terms of awesomeness. Uh, you know, I like mean, these, these are Gundams. Looks yeah. Cool. He is quite cool. The, mus the mustache Gundam. The, going down the there. turn A Gundam. Holy crap. Barbatos. That guy's sword is mahoosed. That is a big, that is a big, big sword. That was one of the cool things about the Iron Blooded Orphan series is like the melee weapons that they have in that series. Like you can see it on the original Barbados here. He's got the, I, I used to call it the corn cob because it reminds me of a corn cob. They've got the giant mace. Bar Iron, Iron Blooded Orphans had really, really cool melee weapons. That was one great thing as far as that series go. And Moving on. What are these, Todd? They seem to be modeled after people. 
Yeah, over here. Now these are not modeled after people, but they have like these these Gundams that are built in like colors chosen by these artists. Now I I don't think that these like famous people actually like built the kits themselves. Oh, really? They probably. <laughs> I, I, this is probably PR, right? I think, yeah, this is just like PR. They just wrote some message for it, and then some professional Gundam builder actually made the kit. That's my, my, at least my, my feeling. Like, maybe they chose the design, the colors. I know you can see here in the hey. reflection, but uh, hey. Yeah, these are really cool. That. Look at that. Yeah, that's the that's zombie that I love, but now it's painted in purple. Which is an interesting exactly. looking color scheme. One of the cool things about these like these famous type Gundams is just like the the color schemes that they choose. Like I wonder like how much input did these famous people actually have oh, probably nothing. with building? Probably yeah, probably nothing. This is really cool. I kind of like the combination we have going up there. We've got the gun tank base, and then we've got the oh god, am I, I'm gonna get the name wrong. I really like this one. Um, oh, the like the Tron, looking? Like Tron looking. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, Tron yeah. looking, like a Tron light bike, but it's a Gundam. Who's it by? Uh, Emerald Dragon. Oh no, that's the name of the game. Dante, Dante Carver. Oh, Carver. Yeah. Okay, I have no idea who this guy yeah, is. I don't know who that is either. All of these people are Japanese except for this one guy at the end. So that's but we interesting. We also have like some. Cool yeah. Costume. And, and Next episode, Todd's going to be wearing that shit. I was going to make a joke about you should be wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> that probably fit you. I think I might be a bit too big for that suit. So it's not going to. My shoulders are just too wide for it, probably. And moving on, there's some really cool like statues over there. Yeah, so we've got some. Oh, I really like oh. the colors on that one. This is another one of those famous guys by this Yuichiro Yumehara, and this is the Sananju Stein HG kit, which came out recently. But I'm really digging this this green and black color scheme. So these are custom colors, right? Yeah, these are custom colors. The, this kit is originally like a light gray colored kit, so it's not in this color. So that looks really cool. But actually, if you come on over here too, we have, not this one, but over here in the front, this one here in the front, this one is actually going to be coming out here later in the month. This is from that new Gundam NT series. So I've already done the Sininja Stein. You were just asking about that green one? Oh yeah. This is the original color from okay. the green one. And then you see, so of course, no Todd's, Todd's, he's talking about this one. Yep. So that's in green on the other side. Right. And obviously we did this one in Gumpa TV a right. while ago. The nice chrome and this shiny is guy. Coming out soon, right? That is coming out next week, I believe. Oh. The NT Gundam. So probably for you guys it'll be a week before. But right. hey, we're not always up to date, but we uh, Right, we've got the this is the same as that chrome shiny guy. This is the Phoenix narrative version. Looks it's a quite an interesting color scheme. Alright, so how about some build fighters? All right, the Build Fighters, they've got the actual characters from Build Fighters, and they are holding the mobile suits that they actually fought with in the series. So he's got his Build Strike up there. Mao's got his, uh, the, what was it called, the, the cross? Oh, my, the name is escaping me, but... Build Fighters was a fun series to watch. This is my favorite kit from 2018. This says it was released in August. So on this wall, we have a lot of the new releases, at least the releases from 2018. So if you guys have been watching our show, we think we've covered, gosh, I don't think I've done all of them because I've missed out on a few of the HG kits. Although I do, I, I do plan to get back to some of these kits at some point whenever there's like a week when nothing new comes out. But a lot of the new releases are here on the wall. I basically, and I recently did the ball, and there's oh, the yeah, Sanandra yeah, Stein yeah, again, yeah. and of course the, the Moon Gundam, we did the Moon Gundam. Now everything here on this section of the wall, these are the exclusives that you can only buy here at the Gundam base. So you can buy any, any of these kits, unless it says, dun dun dun, dun sold out. out. So yeah. I missed the chance to buy these uh, chrome plated kits, although to be honest with you guys, at Nimon about $200. I think you can just buy the regular version, get and some paint, paint and, and paint it yourself. Yeah. So I'm not too sad about but losing out on that. Amazing. That one does look cool. Oh, but how would you spray paint the little the little rockets on, on the top? Yeah. Well, same as the painting the rest of it. Those parts are just like They're individually separate. separate yeah. So the part in the middle, that dark plastic, the gray plastic part, you put that in after you build it. So just paint the the colored parts how you want it beforehand before building it. Now one of these kits that you wouldn't be able to paint it exactly how they have it here actually is this real grade 
the real grade unicorn. And actually, now I'm, now that I see it sold out, I'm kind of regretting not buying it when I was here before. But at 8,000 yen, about $80, it was yeah, a bit too expensive crazy. for my blood. But the clear, like those clear yellow parts, you can't paint clear parts. So, I mean, you could buy this kit and you could try to paint those parts, but you can't duplicate the, duplicate the clear parts. So, unfortunately... Sad thought. Sad thought. Oh, and that one, actually, I'm kind of surprised that one sold out, too. So, in the back, this is another exclusive here. This is the, the, the Unicorn Perfectibility version. So, what, that one's really cool because it came with, like, everything. It was a really cool color scheme, but that is sold out now too. I'm kind of surprised actually how many of these kits are sold out. But I'm really amazed by how much better these look than when we put them on Gumpler TV. <laughs> hey, hey, hey now. Okay, the Neo Zeon. So I have this massive thing sitting in my living room actually. This whole massive thing? I have this whole massive thing sitting in my living room. It just sits on top of one of the shelves. As you can imagine, this thing takes up quite a bit of space. Cause, and it's quite expensive as well. But I mean, if you look at the, the back of it, baby's got back on this one it's got quite a bit of a booty to it oh, so yeah. so you can't just put it on any regular shelf it needs to have like one that has quite yeah, some know, space yeah. so i actually have it like sitting sideways just to be able to fit that thing on there all right so at gundam and bases we were talking about they have like exclusive kits that you can't actually buy anywhere else including sadly probably link japan and one of those kits which i am planning actually to take home with me today is the momoharo clear color because of course you can't paint clear color kits and Which it says color? limited item. For? Yeah, look at that. Limited item. Limited. Actually, no, I'm going for this one because going for the, pink. the yellow and the green clear ones, I actually have. I bought before when I came to this place before. So this one is brand new, as you can see on the tag. It just came out this November. So I will be taking home a clear color Momohara. How much? This thing is really cheap. It's only 650 yen, about six bucks. One, one thing I want to mention to you guys, if you guys ever do come to the Gundam base and you want to buy a Gundam kit, if it is something that you can buy on HLJ, then trust me, you want to buy it on HLJ because our prices are much lower. Lower than this. Lower than this. Because if you look here, this is 2,808 yen, right? That is like the full retail box value. The box value is 2,600 yen. And then you add the tax because in Japan there's an 8% tax. At the moment it's going to go to 10% at some point. So you're paying the full retail price of the kit plus the Japanese tax. So actually you're going to get a much better deal if you buy these on HLJ. So I would, and plus actually, and save yourself the suitcase. Wow, look at this. This is really cool looking. This is from the GBWC Gunplow Builders World Cup Championships from 2018. And what you're looking at is the open course champion for the Japan round. And he really went all out making this diorama with the mirror in the back and the, the step, the angle that makes it look, give it that extra depth. That looks really awesome. That's a really fantastic job. What, what kit is that there? That's the, oh, that's uh, uh, Xia. the PG Gundam Exia. Okay, so he used the PG Gundam Exia for that. That's got to be a pretty pricey build. Even the outside of it has some great detail. You can barely see it on the side there. Oh, yeah. That looks fantastic. This is the junior course champion. So junior course is of course somebody that's under 18. I'm not sure what the age limit cutoff is for that, but that's pretty cool. You got the Gundam's last stand and some famous poses from the show. You got a Zaku exploding as well. Interesting diorama from a junior. Hey, looks like they had a painting competition from last June to September, so they got uh, some of the different entries in here, different color variations, people painted them. They've got the builders' names on the bottom. These are all probably from somewhere here in Japan. Looks quite interesting. There we go. We got bear guy with the matching Pucci bear guy on the side. And now it is set up in the giant Neo Zeon kit with a bunch of flowers painted on there. Although, to be honest, I don't like that's paint. I think these flowers, the flowers look like metal aluminum foil. Like they bought this aluminum foil and they just use that to like layer it on there. Although they did paint all the pink stuff, of course. But interesting, interesting choice. We got a, a giant blue Neo Zeon with a matching blue uh, Sinanju on the inside. 
These are all built by the BB Meister Wakao here in the, the BB section. We got some other stuff on there. So I think these kits are all kits that are built by the professional model makers they have here at the Gundam base. All right, so here's something interesting there. Here, they have it set up like level one, level two, level three, level four, 3.5 and five. So you can tell like from the beginning, the one on the left, the level one, this is just like what usually I just sew, just straight out of the box, just put the kit together. That's all you need to do. And then um, next to the right, they got it set up with the decals. They got it set up with a flat coat. And next to that on the right, they actually have it painted now. So now it's painted, but there are no decals or anything set up. It's just painted, it looks like. Plus maybe a top coat, I'm not too sure. Now they're doing a bit of weathering here at 3.5, so it's painted, plus you get some weathering going on, giving it that dirty effect part there. And then they have over here level five, it says difficulty. It says, I think it says this took them 23 hours to make to make this one. So this one, they've got a really nice looking metallic kind of candy they've coat going on. They've done it on every single thing. So. so yeah, they have it going on here with just the regular HG. Looks quite good, just showing you how fancy you can go, even even down here with the Barbados. Level one, just snap together. Top coat decals, a little weathering, more weathering and full out, completely painted, looking beautiful. Okay, so actually here, they have some really professional done Gundam kits, and they have some done by one of my favorite Gunpla builders, and his name, and you can see it there on the tag, his name is Naoki. Now Naoki is a real professional, he's done a lot of, actually he designs some of the kits now, he works for Bandai, but he does, he works for the Gundam Hobby Life magazine, which we also sell on HLJ.com, that comes out periodically. And he does a really fantastic job when he builds the kits. He doesn't just build it straight out of the box. They are put together, they are painted, the parts are changed quite a bit to give them a really new look. Nice and sharp on those the lines and the parts. Just a fantastic job. I love his work. Oh yeah, they did a diorama of them building the thing. Alright, so you are here, so we're going to go in next to the factory zone. So in this they're going to kind of show a little bit about how they actually produce the Gundam kits. So let's take a look. Why hello. Alright, so here we have, this is going to be an example I think of, oh actually, what is this machine, to be honest with you? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not like the molding machine. No, this, ah, baby plast? What the heck? This has something to do with the plastic. Okay, so if you're wondering what the plastic looks like before they actually make the Gundam kits, here you go, this is it. This is the actual plastic that they use to make these Gundam kits. And they have a whole bunch of different colors set up here, and they have a hole in this one so you can you can get your hands on the plastic. Go for it, Todd. Oh yeah, that feels good. Oh, okay, this plastic. One is do not touch. This one do not touch. Yep, but no holes in it. This one is set up. It's probably got so many people's right. old filthy hands. I wonder how much people sweats in there and whatnot. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to have lunch. <laughs> but that's cool. It's cool to see the plastic. It's making into strands. We were oh. talking about this before. Yeah, here's a mold. So this is 
This is an actual one of the actual steel molds that they use to make the kit. So when they when they design the kits, and we'll actually show it over there in a little bit, they, they, they put the, the molds inside of these things, and this is what they inject the plastic. Actually, you just saw a piece of plastic fall. This is what they inject the plastic into. They inject the plastic into the holes, and it comes out and makes a Gundam kit. Actually, come over here. Let's take a look at that so that you can get a better idea. So when they inject the mold, here's one side of the mold. They inject the mold into the runner, and you can see like the, the outline of the runner. So the, the plastic goes through these holes, and it fills into these parts, and while it's still hot, of course. And that's what makes your Gundam plastic parts. All right, so what you are looking here, this is a scale model of the actual Bandai factory in Shizu, located in Shizuoka Station. If you ever go to Shizuoka Station, it's located to the Higashi Shizuoka Station exit, exit, not the main Shizuoka exit. You can actually, as a regular visitor, I don't think you can actually go and just walk into the door and say, hi, I'm here, let me see your factory. No, I don't think you can do that. But here at Gundam Base, you can see this really cool scale model. So on the first floor of the factory, this is where they have the machines, and they actually do have the machines painted in these Gundam colors, I believe. With the main factory floor, this is the molding machines, this is where they actually mold and make the make the the model kits. And then in the back they have like their storage and like the boxing area before it ships off to the different distributors like Hobby Link Japan or other distributors. And on the second floor they have this is going to be like their design department. This is where that you're gonna find the regular salarymen, the office workers. They design the kits, they work on the kits, they do probably I am marketing, I would imagine, is probably handled by their Tokyo office, but as far as the design of the kits, the engineering of the kits, they're probably going to, all this work is going to be done here on the second floor of their Shizuoka office. And a cafeteria. And a cafeteria, and they have toilets too. <laughs> so if you ever, they, somebody out there actually modeled scale toilets of their stuff. Hey now, there's a camera. All right, so as far as the making the Gundam kits, let's, let's take a look at how they make these kits. So first off, they have the artwork from the anime in the series. They need to actually design the kit. So they go ahead and they draw it, of course, like normal people would do. They draw it on paper. They get an idea of what they want to make. And after they design the kits on paper, they get a good idea of what they have. Next is going to be the engineering's department. So they need to actually figure out, okay, we have the design. We know what it looks like. Now we have to figure out actually how to make the kit into the form that looks like what we see on the paper. So then this, this engineering department, they're going to have, they're going to draw it on the paper. Imagine, kind of imagine how they would make their parts. So you can see these are, I believe these are the actual kind of like engineering documents from Bandai Hobby. So you get a good taste or a good idea of what they go through to put together the kits that we know and we love. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work it looks like. So, but thanks to them, they make it. Next up, we have many colors. So, as you know, Gundam kits are molded in colors, and Bandai has a way to make these, make the plastic, probably mix and match the plastics to different colors to make the colors, specific color they're looking for in a kit. So, over here they have set up just a standard old white Gundam, as you, as is the typical standard color, <laughs> I should say. It looks like it's from the unicorn. I think probably the real grade. All right, so next up, so they've, they've designed it on paper. Next up is going to be the mach machinist's job. All right, so somebody in Bandai has actually got to make the metal, the metal tooling, the metal molds that we looked at before. They have to make these, these, the molds in order to inject the plastic in, into it and to get the kits. And how they do that, they start off with these, the softer copper type of metal bits to get like the master. And then from the copper, they go on to the full-fledged steel. So steel of, is of course a lot harder to deal with than Copper, so they need the real good machining work to do that and yeah looks this has got to be a pretty difficult job I have to say and of course the box is important so they got to have appealing box art on these kits in order to sell the kits you could walk into a into a store here in Japan you see this on the shelf if the box art isn't appealing it doesn't make you want to buy it so they really do try to do a really good job of making these look fantastically appealing Great artwork. But Todd, what about that hid hideous box art from before where you couldn't understand anything? Maybe it was the golden version or something like that. I can't remember. Well, was one of them like really oh starred and was like it was a blown up into like yeah, a million yeah, yeah. versions? Well, they get creative sometimes, I have to say. 
Oh, here's an interesting model. I believe it has been available before on Hobby Link Japan. Don't quote me on that. I think this was a regular release at some point, maybe not, but I, I know I have this in my stash, but they actually have a model kit of the injection machine. This is the machine that they use to inject into those steel molds to make the kits. So if you want to make a kit of the machine that makes the kits, they have that for you. That's insane. Isn't it? It's pretty cool. That's, I'm trying to wonder what the heck is this machine? Oh, okay. This is like a, I think this is like a small mold machine. Yeah. So it looks like you can inject the plastic. They have the plastic pellets that you inject to it. And then you have like a small tiny mold here. And then you're going to have a runner that comes out the bottom. So this is how they make like smaller runners. Maybe they use this for like the smaller poly, poly cap type runners and whatnot. Right, they probably have this set up here so that they can knock out some quick runners every now and then just yeah. to give to people. Actually, speaking of that, if you come over here, I think, yeah, this is what it's doing. If you look over there in that bag next to the scale, I think those little tiny runners, if you're able to zoom in on that, they got this, this bag of plastic little oh, clear right. scale runners. Okay. I think now. those are, that's a bag full of parts that they've probably pumped out with this machine here. Oh, okay. so it's like miniature stuff. A little miniature thing, probably just to give to guests that come. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're like doing it today. A new technology, but yeah. Maybe. So this, these are some of the champions from previous previous Gumbla Builders World Champions. They have their names on tags over here. I know I've seen a lot of this stuff online before, and they do a really fantastic job. It's just insane. Yusuke Yokota. Alright, so if you win one of the Gunpla Builders World Champions, now, not just the main winner, but I think probably like the top three, they all end up with this trophy here in the middle. Although I'm not sure if only the top winner gets the gold one or whatnot, but that's a pretty cool looking trophy. Maybe someday I can get a get one for myself. <laughs> if I'm never, if I ever get off my butt. Here's another entrance from Gundam Builders World Cup Championship from, is that from Malaysia? Yeah, from yeah, Malaysia. Malaysia. He's they're really cool looking. Uh, I like this one. You can tell. This is a lot of parts from the Nightingale. Actually, they have they mentioned that here. So he's repurposed a lot of the parts from the Nightingale. You got his uh, the back plate, and you've got one of his shoulder guards working his neck there. And these are custom, right? And these are all custom. So this guy designed this on his own, came up with the idea. It's really cool looking, I gotta say. And moving on. Oh. Moving on. All right. Oh my God. Okay. So, I'm going to zoom in on this bad boy. Okay, so, actually it mentions that this is in not 1 144 scale, not Master Grade 1 100 scale, but 1 220 scale. So, this is going to be quite, quite small if you think about it scale-wise, but just the amount of details that's gone into it, it looks really fantastic. I always, I, I mean, big kits are fun, but I really kind of love small kits where you can tell they've taken the time to go yeah. in there and do the that extra detail because the engines look great like, the engines look great he's got that that kind of color fading going on there with the engines a lot of metallic paints going on here that just looks fantastic okay now next up this is actually the part that i've been looking forward to covering most in this show now this is as you can tell this is like a giant wall this is like an ex encyclopedia of gundam and it's in hg scale so starting up I've Oh, starting off at the top, we got the OG, the original RX-78 Gundam. Now, this is the revived version that came out a few years ago. And you can tell, like, they have mobile suits that they haven't made kits of yet, and they just, like, represented as artwork. But if they have made kits of these suits, then they actually have them up here on the wall. Now, I just love this because I kind of like, really like encyclopedia-type stuff, and this is basically just a giant wall of encyclopedia. So let's go down the wall and let's take a look. So we got my favorite. You know, guys, I love the bald Gundams. Let's see if we can get that in there without Dave's shadow. Hey, hey, hey. And then we got the different versions of the ball Gundams that they have not released yet, or there's my shadow, that they have not released yet in kits in HG scale. Some really cool stuff. I love looking at that. We got the Blue Destiny going on up here. We did, this one was released not that long ago. And you got some of the older stuff, the RX-78 GP-02A. And then we have the Gerba Tetra. That was released. I don't remember when that was released. And of course, you got the giant Dendob Dendrobrium. Dendrobium. I believe this is still available for purchase on HLJ.com. A really massive kit. I actually have never built this kit. It looks cool. I don't have that one yet. But yeah, let's just go along the wall.
Oh, he's a fat, bad, bad boy. Yeah, the Gundam VO. I like the big mobile suits, and the O is another, another kind of favorite of mine, just because of how big it is. And of course, speaking of big, you've got Psycho Gundam. So, have these been like professionally painted, or do you think, oh, what? You know, actually, I think they are painted. They don't look like the standard plastic colors, so I think they've painted it the, the standard colors that you expect if you were to paint it just according to the box. So. Yeah. They are in the original colors, it looks like. Really cool looking stuff. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, so now we're getting into some of the more the newer series stuff, actually. So there's like the Perfectibility Gundam and the Phoenix narrative version. And then this, uh, this one here, this is the... the uh, uh, the Native Gundam, I believe it's called. Oh yeah, Narrative, Native Gundam the, AK. The NT Gundam. This guy is going to be coming out here in a couple of months. And I got another version of that as well. Yeah, it's a premium band Oh, that is indeed. Oh, the Gustav Carl. The Gustav Carl. So, of course, we have Carl working in our in our Hobby Link Japan. Sure. And here's some artwork. <laughs> and Todd. So what's what's the thing you like best in the world? Secret. <laughs> I like secrets. <laughs> Give me your secrets. <laughs> Actually, come over here. Let's take a look at this guy. I'm looking forward to this guy being released. So this is the new Jar Jar, and it's going to be out in January. This is a HG kit. So they they re originally released the the Gian, the R Gian, Gian Gian, I believe it was from Build Build Fighters Try, and everybody expected at some point they're going to make the Jar Jar because that's the Build Fighters kit is based off the Jar Jar. Finally, we're getting the Jar Jar. All right, and releasing in December, it's the new Perfect Grade Double O Gundam Seven Sword G. So we covered this one at the Tokyo Show, and this guy's going to be out soon. Next month, it's coming up soon, like a few weeks away, actually. <gasps> I'm gonna, wow. It's going to be a busy December. More secrets? Okay. Hey, all right, so continuing on with our wall tour of their little encyclopedia here and they have they have two they have two walls so we, we looked at the other side of the wall now we're coming on over to this side now you notice here at the bottom i don't think i pointed that out actually they have this the kits are listed in the universal century year that they were that they were out so actually i'm kind of going backwards here because you see 79 would be over that side so but oh, it's okay let's go backwards so let's start at 97. so this is from some of the newer series we got yep we have some of the new stuff coming out. And of course, we've got the giant Neo Zeong. We've got Kshatriya. Everybody loves this suit. Everybody's dying to have the suit in 1 100 scale. Rebu, I like this kid too, although that was a perfect grade only release, sadly. Now, here's one that, of course, is my favorite, although this is the HD version, not the RG. This is the Sazabi. And below it, something I hope someday Bandai releases in 1148 scale, the Nightingale. One of my favorite suits. We got the Moon Gundam. That was a beautiful suit. I loved building that thing. The Bawoos. And there's the Gad Jar Jar that we saw earlier. Oh, and the Zaku 3. I love Zaku 3 because he's like a nice big thing. Oh, the Gaz R and the Gaz L. Unfortunately, those are going to be premium Bandai only releases, so we won't be able to sell those on Hobby Link Japan. <laughs> well, I mean, not sad for me because I can't build it for the show, but I live in Japan, so I still have the means of getting it for myself. So, Wait. <laughs> sorry. So here's another stuff. I love Gian. Gian's one of my favorite mobile suits. So they have the Gian and they have the Gian Krieger version. That was another premium Bandai release, sadly. <laughs> sorry. I can't help what Bandai releases, but hey, whatever they do release in regular retail, we'll, we will cover that on HobbyLink.tv. Oh, Side B! You know, I just realized that Side B, this is all Zeong stuff. 
So this is all like the bad guy mobile suits. I don't know why I didn't realize that before. So this is the Zeong side and on the, on the other side we had the Earth Federation more Gundam side. That's kind of interesting. Now I also I have to apologize because I think I mentioned earlier in the video that we'll take a look at a giant Sazabi that they have here in the shop. Unfortunately that's gone apparently. The last time I was here a couple months ago they had the giant Sazabi. It was sitting up over here right in the entrance. They must have taken it out to bring it to one of the other one of the other kind of pop-up Gundam based shops things that the ex ex exhibitions that they do around the country. There's going to be one in Kumamoto, I believe, which Dave you might that might sound from be a familiar place for you. I've never been down there. I think it is time that maybe we should well, it's time to for Todd to buy some stuff. Yep, I have to and get then some stuff. Go to Akihabara. Right? Akihabara. So okay, let's go. Let's head off. Now one cool thing that they also do here at the Gundam base is they've kind of copied Gunpla TV. So Gunpla TV has been around for years. We're already on episode 300. Now on YouTube, only in Japanese though, they do the Gundam base live. So they have a YouTube show that they do here. They're actually not recording at the moment. I think the guy's just using this space to build some stuff. But this is where they filmed their own version of our Gunpla TV. It's kind of interesting to see that. It's fake though, right? It's, it's fake. fake. We're the original Gunpla TV. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, Sid is. Why hello and welcome back. Now we are in fabulous Akihabara. And what are we going to do here, Dave? <laughs> I don't know, but why the <laughs> why oh, sorry. <clears throat> why is it so dark? Well, that train ride was a bit long and yes, I lost my bag. What are we doing now? Now, well, since we are with Hobby Link Japan, we don't need to go to the shops like Yellow Submarine and Volks and and Yorobashi camera because all that stuff that they sell in those shops basically all that stuff you can find on our site Hobby Link Japan so we just kind of wanted to come here to Akihabara kind of show you around show you a little bit of the sites maybe hit up some of the used shops the shops oh, where you yeah, can find definitely. older limited Gundams that like you can't find anywhere else just to give you guys a look of course that's also stuff you can't buy on HLJ but hey it's fun just to get around and see something new Oh, hey, Todd. Hey. Where are we hitting up? All right, so the first stop I wanted to make is Mandarake. So Mandarake. Mandarake. I'm not recording the That's audio. Fine. We don't care. <laughs> Todd, we don't care. We just want to hear you. Yeah. So Mandarake, if you've never been here, this yeah. is a shop that sells used goods. A lot of people call it Mandrake. Yeah. But in Japanese, it's Mandarake. Mandarake. And we're hitting it up. We're going to hit it up. We're going to see what kind of used gun they have. Let's go for it. This. This is Gumpla Unrelated Goods. All good smell. <laughs> okay, back to thought. Okay, so here we are inside of the Mandarake, and as you can tell, they've got a interesting no, as selection. As you can tell, as you can Todd do, can't speak tell. very loud because we're going to get caught. <laughs> This might be one of those shops that says no recording, so I have to be quiet. But yeah, I mean, as, as you can see, it's just like they've got lots of old stuff. Use like the, the exclusive stuff, Gundam front stuff, old stuff, just a wide variety. I and mean, even here, like these are like old. Uh, resin kits. Yeah, just just get a good shot of all this stuff if you can. Just. So much stuff to like go through. I, whenever I come to these shops, I just like I have to like pace out my view, like look at each shelf, like what am I looking for? Bam, 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 bam. Wait, I've got a question, Todd. So if these are second hand, right? 
than what's inside the box. Usually, I because I have bought quite a few secondhand model kits. The secondhand model kits, for the most part, what you find here in Japan, everything is just brand new inside of the box. I've sometimes you'll you'll see so parts. Those people have bought the product. And they've, like, they've they've bought it and they it. they realize ah, I'm never going to get around to this, so they just want to get cash for it, or maybe who knows, maybe their girlfriend got girlfriend wanted to clear out their boyfriend's stash. So <laughs> So, I mean, we're just looking at um, Gundam, right? We're just but looking at Gundam, there's but... There's crazy amounts of stuff. There is absolutely insane amount of stuff. Other stuff, figures and ships. And... So, yeah, basically, what we've seen right. is that some stuff can be really cheap. Some stuff can be cheap, but some but stuff some is going to be quite price. expensive. Like, here we have the Hot Toys Iron Man Mark VI, and that is... None a month, like seven hundred dollars. If you buy it at the time, oh, then you get it cheaper. But if you wait ages, then it, the price obviously goes up. Right. There is a discovery. Now this is from the movie two thousand one. But the thing is, is now they have an actual plastic model kit, so the resin kits aren't really needed anymore. Still, it's a classic. Of course, these days with three D printers, I could probably print that thing. Okay, so now we found the section that has the really expensive big Gundam kits. And over on the left we have... Oh, dun, 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 dun. oh there's a Haro there. There's a Haro, <laughs> Haro! Wow, look at this. This is the Fenix, the perfect grade Fenix. This is an online just exclusive. Just for you guys, that, just, just put the, the point on the other side and that's in dollars. Yeah, like about $450. So it's $450. Holy crap. And of course so they've got the, the, fu the Fumina, the figure eyes oh, Labo yeah, Fumina. Who has that? I have it too. Yeah, <laughs> baby. I haven't so, made it yet. Yes. So I haven't made it yet. We're at another shop called The Jungle. The jungle? The <laughs> Jungle. And I'm taking this home. Okay, so this is the 7-Eleven <laughs> Put you guys. Put you guys set. Right. But it's 7-Eleven edition, right? Yeah, so it's become like molded in the colors. Yeah. Original Macross Emi edition factory. How much? 3,000 yen. That's not too bad. That's not bad at all. I have the Bandai boxings. It's not fast kit. It's an old AMT kit. Yeah, it's quite old. It's not fast. The droid fighter from episode one, but it's only... 540. 540 yen, so and that's you, like five you, bucks. Yeah, and you check that out. You looked that on Amazon, right? It's going for quite a bit more in Japan. How much? Oh, I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> but, but in yeah. Japan, it's like 7,000 yen, about 70 bucks. Yeah, but it's crazy. Here's Seriously, another. there's some great stuff here. another one. I'm kind of really wanting to get oh the old fine molds, fine molds. Falcon. Millennium Falcon. But then they also have the Banda here. At the oh, they got the premium. I have this. You have it. I have this one, but I don't have this. I kind of just want both. I think me and Todd are gonna have to end it there. Oh, hey now. And say goodbye. Three hundred episode. Okay, and that's it for episode 300. Now we're at the part that I'm sure everybody has probably tuned in to watch for. And my favorite part too. Hi, everybody. That's right. I am once again joined by the big boss. I'm Scott, Scott. CEO of HLJ. And literally, this is my favorite part because um, call me old fashioned, but one of my favorite parts of my job here at HLJ is every month on payroll day, <laughs> I like to go around the office and hand out the payroll slips to everyone individually thank them for their hard work. I actually do this, right? Right, every yeah, week, every month. Because as an employer, it just kind of feels cool to be able to you know, directly thank your employees for all of their hard work. And today, I get to kind of directly thank my customers right. uh, for all of their loyalty by, yes, giving them something <gasps> for free. Right. Look at all this cool stuff. This is a big giveaway. Yep, and we're about to give all of this away to one of about 300, or six actually, Yes, of six, about 300 have lucky six people. Six different prizes here. So we have a big wad of, of names and comments here. We do indeed. So we had over 300 comments, and I went through and made these papers. So if you had a live really, really, really long comment, yeah. sorry, that probably got edited down. So I wanted to be fair and give everybody the exact same odds of winning. So every piece of paper, every slip in there is the yeah. same size. And Todd really went to great lengths to create this pile of little slips here. Everything's the same size. Uh, we have actual real uh, comments all printed on here, and we're going to yep. do this for real here. We're not we're not playing favorites and picking out you know our favorite comments or our favorite customers. This is a real, genuine, random drawing. And of course, uh, for <laughs> our bucket today, we have a we have a bucket we're going to be using here. 
uh, to put these slips into. So let's so let's do it. Okay, you hold ready? That for me. Hold that for me, Todd. All right. So, but how? Sh which one should we give away first? Do you want to start with the small oh, stuff? Oh, I think yeah. Start with start, start small. Okay, start with the small. You always want to you always want to draw these things out, right? Yeah. Isn't that the way you keep fan attention? Or whatever. Yeah, I, I think, think that, that was in the manual. So, right? so maybe we could start from the elf. We can just kind of work in a clockwise order. Okay, maybe. yeah, that works. We could go around like this. Okay, right. cool. So I, I took the, the rubber band off now, and now we've got all these slips, and we're just going in there. Shwong. Okay, so... And we need to really need mix to those really up good. Mix these up, so... This is fun. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to make sure that everyone in here has a good chance to get this, so... All right, so I think maybe this is probably mixed up. Nothing, no comments have mysteriously fell to the floor here. Nope, nope. Floor's so clean. everything is in here. We got a nice big mix. Okay, are you ready? Are All you ready to find the winner of Magic Fingers? The Elf. So we're going for the Elf Bullock. Right? Bullock. Bullock. Yes. <laughs> this will be the winner of the Elf Bullock. And here we go. Shwang. And my fingers have magically latched on to this one right here. Okay. Coming out. Shwang. All right, so who do we have? Okay, and the winner is N. Zanglia. And his slash her comment is, Super cool 300th episode giveaway. Well, I agree. You win something in it. Have you guys seen the Furai Transformers model kits from Flame Toys? I haven't. Have you? No, it doesn't ring a bell. No. To answer your question. <laughs> but congratulations anyway, right. Enzanglia. Okay. Uh, you are the grand winner of the Elf Block. So, so we'll put right. that there to keep track of who's winning what. Okay. All, All right. right. So there we go. So let's go on. Next we have... Magic Fingers next going up, in. Next up we have the... Boom. And this is the Versailles Night Gundam. This is one of those cool little Night Gundam. It's like the BB kits. Right. Looks really cool. I like the night gun down there. This is great, great desktop stuff here. These yeah. are fun to have on your on your desk at work. Most and definitely. And we're going in here. Okay, the last one I pulled kind of from the bottom. We're going to go sort of shallow on this one. Okay. Here we go. I got one. Oh, oh, oh. This one. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Everybody's got a number at the end of their name <laughs> these days. Okay. Yeah. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it is the comment from the winner of the Marcel uh, Kishi Gundam. Okay. Uh -huh. And that would be Vemon24, V-E-E-M-O-N-24. Thank you so much for your comment, and congratulations. Right. You're the winner of the Versal Night Gun. That's an old 80s song, too. I'm so yeah. excited. Name that tune. I can't remember the name. That would be the Pointer Sisters oh. singing. You got me. <laughs> I'll get the title before the end of this drawing, right. I'm sure. Uh, but that's uh, probably one of the songs, I think, that was used in Beverly Hills Comp. Oh, way back okay. In the day. Yeah, a lot of good music. Axel F, of course. Isn't I So Excited is the name of the song, isn't it? It might, it might very well be. Okay. Somebody Wikipedia that. <laughs> Alrighty. And right, the third. Up, now we've got, uh, this speaking is of winning, it's Winning Fuma? Fumina. Fumina. Winning Fumina. Winning this, Fumina. This is kind of cool because you get the grill kit, and I believe it also comes with a little SD kind of kit to it. All right. Oh, well. yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a bit like, of a dual like kit. It's like a two-in-one. Two-in-one, and you can combine parts from this onto her to make her look like extra fancy. Yeah, this would also be great fun for a desktop at the office or whatever. <laughs> well, definitely. And the lucky winner of winning Fumina is going to be this slip right here. Okay. Okay. da 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 OMG, they're so cute. Uh, and that is the comment from Carito. Okay. Uh, Carito, no number. Congratulations mm -hmm. for ha not having a number after your name. You are now the winner, Carito. That's C-A-R-I-T-O uh, of winning Fumina. Congratulations. Congratulations indeed. All right. So oh that's God. it for the smaller stuff, kind of. So now we're going to start moving into the Did big Did you guys stuff. get budget approval for this? Because these are some really expensive kits in the bottom row here. Yeah, they are. All right, a little late now. Um, <laughs> off we go. Oh, my off God. We We're go. actually giving one of these away? We are indeed. And this is... High-resolution model, Wing Gundam <sighs> Zero EW. Right? It looks Holy beautiful cow. once yeah. it's put together. But once you get it together, I would, don't know if I'd want to touch it too much after that. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's see who's going to be uh, taking that home this okay. holiday season. Digging and digging and digging. I'm going to go deep on this one. We're going Ooh, deep. He's going deep. And using my left hand. There we go. Whoop. And out it comes. 300 episodes. I feel so old because of that. <laughs> you feel old. Uh, congratulations. The winner of the high resolution Wing Gundam EW is Dorosh Nikita. Dorosh Nikita. D O R O S H N I K I T A. Dorosh Nikita is the big winner of right. the 
uh, high resolution model Wing Gundam Zero EW. Congratulations, okay. Darosh Nikita. Congratulations, indeed. All right, so now we're down to the, the last. The two, the two big wonkers the here. The two big ones. I'm okay. going to let you draw one, Todd. Oh, is I'll, it I'll my hold turn? the bucket okay. for you. Yeah, let you let you draw one for us. I don't know. Should I? Gosh, should we keep the Exia for last and do the Deep Striker first? I don't know. We were going in a nice Maybe sort of nice order. Okay, my, okay, my OCD okay. is suggesting that we keep going in order here. So that's true. So yeah, you can draw the Exia. Perfect right, grade so. Gundam Exia it requires oh, no the explanation. Grade. Okay. Boom. So oh gosh. Oh, I my my hands is attached to this one. Okay. What do we got? And I have this comment says that guard frame really looks like Pat Labor Mech. But anyways, congrats on 300 episodes. Hope hoping to see. And it got cut after that. Probably was too long. And the winner is, the comment name is Zeryl. Z-E-R-Y-L-L. Z-E. Z-E. Zeryl. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Maybe their real name is Daryl. Or something along those lines. Maybe. But wow. Very Merry Christmas to you for this one here. Yes, indeed. And thank you for your nice comment about our 300th episode. So the big winner of the Perfect Grade Gundam Exia. Okay. Congratulations, If you could take Kylo back here. Okay. So now it's time for the Deep I'm going to go for the Deep Striker. All right, we're going deep now. I was going to say, yeah, with a name like Deep Striker, i got to go deep, right? Okay, so here we go. We're going to mix them up a little bit here first again. And for our last big winner. Oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in here. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, there it is. I got it. <gasps> Episode 300 would be awesome, plus happy early Merry Christmas. Oh. And a happy early, well, not so early at this point, Merry Christmas to the winner of the Deep Striker Master Grade Kit. That would be Metal Gunpla Built. Ooh. All one word strung together. Metal Gunpla Built. Metal Gunpla congratulations Built. to Metal Gunpla Built. You've got a big box headed your way. Yes, you uh, do. So congratulations. Wow, this was a lot of fun. Huh? No. So we don't own this stuff anymore. Nope. We don't indeed, so... Well, thank you very much to the six hundred folks, or the excuse me, the six folks uh, who were lucky enough to win, and also to the other uh, two hundred and ninety-four or so right. uh, folks who, sadly, uh, you're still in the bucket there. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about that, but we love you nonetheless. Yes, we do. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't have been able to make it uh, three hundred. I mean, even if we could afford to do three hundred, if we weren't getting the views, you know, our, our our souls would have been crushed, and we would have given up long ago. I'm yeah. sure. So all these great comments, all your great watching, that's what's uh, really keeping us going. We appreciate it so much. Yes, indeed. Okay, wow. Gosh. And now we got to ship this stuff. And now we do have to ship okay. this stuff. All right, so for the ones, for all of the winners of these prizes, I will be contacting you on hobbylink.tv. So be sure to stay tuned to your, I think you probably should get an email notification whenever I send you a message. Probably maybe a week after this episode goes up. Okay. I'll start sending those messages to give everybody out there a chance to watch the episode first. So that does it really i think for that was fun um we ought to do this more often yes every but do we have could we let i don't know if we want to do perfect grades every time <laughs> maybe we can tone it down a bit maybe you know. a bit smaller ones every now and then <laughs> maybe. but hey it's christmas it's 300 episodes yes. we gotta we gotta be generous this time so yes. again thanks so much everybody have a very very happy holiday season and thank you for your kind comments about our 300th episode we'll be back for hopefully another 300 or 300,000. oh my goodness yeah <gasps> Take care.